What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today is an exciting day. Alrighty guys, well I'm here at the bank. Good old Chase here. Picking up some cash, and why are we picking up some cash, might you ask? Well, we're picking up something really fun in just a few minutes. So if you take a look at the Jeep here, you're gonna see, I basically emptied everything out of it. Got the back seats folded down, took the uh, DIY trunk out just to make some extra space. Of course, got rid of the doors and the top. Need to make sure we got as much room as possible for what I am about to go pick up and transport in here. I'm sure you guys, you're all very smart and uh, I'm sure you figured it out by now. So make sure you comment below if you guess what I'm headed to pick up. Alrighty guys, what's up? We are back in my driveway and if you ever wondered if you can fit five 40 inch tires in the back of a Jeep JKU, well, there you go, you sure can. We got uh, three in the back here. One, two, three. Number four sitting right behind. And of course, better place to scare, uh, carry that spare tire, spare your scare tire, up on the roof. And that's it. Luckily, we only had to drive a mile and a half home to pick these up. That's always nice when you don't have to drive two, three, four hours to go get a set of tires. So. Uh, these are the 40 inch Milestar Patagonias. I know you guys watched my video where I didn't give these tires a great review, but I did say that if I could get a used set at a decent price, that I would certainly be interested in sticking with them simply because of the weight and because of how well they perform off-road on the rocks. Um, so that's kind of where we are at, so. Alrighty guys, well, tomorrow is the big day. We are going to get these 40s put on. Uh, but in order to make sure that I am able to drive this thing home from the tire shop after they get them installed, I just wanna do a little bit of trimming just to make sure that I've got enough room uh, to drive these bad boys home. Uh, so what we're gonna do is two stages. We'll get the trimming done first, we'll get the tires installed, and after that, um, We'll save this for another video, uh, but then we're going to do some flex testing and kind of see where we need to set bump stops at uh, just to make sure we're not rubbing inside when we get to uh, full stuffs. Uh, but I did trim them to put the 38s on, uh, and as you can see, I did trim a little bit of this inside pinch seam here. Uh, so what we're going to do today is just trim that back a little bit more. I'm going to add about an inch uh, of extra room over there, and then same thing back here, just going to kind of you know, trim this back just a little bit, maybe a half inch or so, um, so that we can uh, see what happens when we stuff these tires up into the wheel wells. We'll make sure that we're not uh, cutting our brand new tires up on uh, pinch seam. <laughs> you guys looking really really nice so we are ready to get these 40s on oh baby all righty well we've got five tires ready to install at the old Lesh Schwab here my Jeep truck at the moment. I think it's pretty versatile when you take those seats out. But, uh, yeah. So we've got our, our 38 here, which we will figure out what we're gonna do with. Maybe put it in storage, maybe sell it. I'm not real sure. 
we're gonna do with that. But uh yeah. expect that I am probably going to get a little bit of pushback on this video. Uh, I'm going to ruffle a few feathers running 40s on a Dana 44s. Now, a um, couple of questions to answer here. First and foremost, why go to 40s? Uh, you know, Dave, you've done everything on 38s. Jeep hasn't had an issue with it. And that's true. Uh, really, the only reason I went to 40s is because I just want to be able to go over bigger stuff. I mean, it's really that simple. So, um, you know, you go out on some of these crazy trails, you look at a few lines and you go, okay, maybe like, you know, some of the stuff on Fordyce Creek, you know, there's an easy line, there's the moderate line that most people take, and then there's the crazy buggy line. And uh, on 38s, 37s, nine times out of 10, you're going to look at the crazy line and go, hmm, no, you are going to go ahead and pass on that. We're going to take the normal Jeep line. With 40s, now you start to think, hmm, maybe that's possible. So really that's the whole thing of going to 40s is to see if there's a way to possibly push my Jeep a little bit further, obstacles maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, obviously there's a little bit of risk involved with that, but you know, that's just, uh, those are the rules of the game, you know? Now the bigger question becomes, Dave, if you're gonna run 40s, well, why the heck aren't you getting one ton axles? Everybody knows you need tons to run 40s. You know that. Of course I do, sir. Everybody knows that. Of course, of course we, we do, sir. So my whole goal for this particular build is to challenge that narrative just a little bit. Now, I, I fully agree that, um, you know, most people who are going to go up to 40s probably wheel their Jeeps pretty hard. A lot of Jeeps that are on 40s are not daily drivers at that point. They kind of become trailer queens. And, uh, you know, when you go out and you push them hard and you break something, it's no big deal because you throw it on a trailer and you just drive it home. With a daily driven Jeep, going to 40s is a whole different ballgame. So for me, there's a couple of advantages to keeping these Dana 44 axles underneath the Jeep instead of going to tons. First and foremost is obviously cost. Um, I've got great strong axles under here. I've built up these 44s uh, pretty well, uh, and they are about as strong as you can make a Dana 44 axle. And so I feel pretty confident slapping these 40s on here and at least testing the waters a bit and seeing what it's going to do. So I've already got great axles under there. If it ain't broke, why fix it? So let's just see uh, if we can save a little bit of money and see how far these 44s will go before we have to spend the coin to upgrade to one ton axles. The second advantage of Dana 44s over the Dana 60s uh, is weight, actually. Um, you know, one ton axles are heavy. They are huge and heavy. The Jeep is already a big fat pig as it is. There's a lot of weight issues that I'm constantly trying to figure out how to mitigate. Um, but yeah, you know, we keep the weight down just a little bit and, uh, you know, that helps in the long run. The other very, very small advantage to these Dana 44s over one ton axles, Dana 60s or 70s, is going to be ground clearance. You know, your Dana 60 is just a bigger differential. It's going to hang down a little bit lower. It's not a huge difference, but every little bit counts. I mean, that's why I chopped up those rear um, shock mounts and put those Evo relocation brackets on there so that I wasn't hanging up rear shock mounts off road all the time. So you've got those advantages of the 44s over the Dana 60s. So what are the cons? What are the disadvantages? Well, obviously, you know, people are going to say strength. The ring and pinion's a little bit smaller, so that kind of becomes uh, your, 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 your worry zone is going to be that ring and pinion. And, you know, the strength of full float axles versus the semi-float, all that stuff too, that all kind of factors into to the uh, equation as well. 
But really the biggest reason for running 40s on Dana 44 axles is why not, you know? Let's go ahead and, uh, you know, let's, let's ruffle the feathers of some of the haters out there. Let's kind of push the boundaries a little bit and we will see just how long this little experiment actually runs. Can you run 40s on the end of 44 axles successfully and still have a good time out there wheeling? Well, we are gonna find out. Alrighty guys, now I know all the haters are just dying to get on their keyboards and leave me a comment as, as to why this is such a bad idea. And so whether you're a hater or whether you're a supporter, I wanna hear from you guys. Leave a comment below on what you think I am going to break first. And maybe how long you think I'm gonna be able to get away with this little experiment uh, before something breaks. I wanna know what you think is gonna break first and why. Guys, that's where we are for right now. Lots of great content to come. We're gonna see how long this experiment lasts. How long can I get away on Dana 44s running 40 inch tires, especially on a Jeep that actually gets wheeled? Only time will tell. So follow along. If you haven't had a chance to hit that subscribe button, please do that. Really, really helps me out. Uh, we're really trying to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. Uh, that's the next goal here. So I really, really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, please join the Blubicon family and stay tuned for more videos. We'll see you guys on the next one.